On the day of the enthronement of Taekchuan's sacred land in the Grand Hall, Yi Chen, an inner disciple, confronts the sacred lord, asking for justice on behalf of Saint Tess Su King, the sacred lord's daughter, who is being married off to young master Gu Chang. He declares that if justice isn't served, he would cease to be a disciple of Taekchuan's sacred land. Gu Chang, a transgressor, is a true disciple of the Doist Deity Palace, whose cultivation level is at the pinnacle of the Sacred Lord realm. According to the system, the fortune levels are divided from low to high into red, orange, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and purple, with an ordinary being at the red fortune level. He ends at the green fortune level, while Gu Chang's black-colored fortune shows that he won't live long, which is likely a villain's. Yi Chen continues to talk badly of Gu Chang, and the sect begins to rebuke him. Yi Chen is surprised that no one, including King whom he has a close relationship with, is supporting him, even though he is the fortune's chosen and the sect's future. Tixuan's sacred prince, Prince Shugxuan, who has a higher cultivation level than Yi Chen, tries to attack him, but Yi Chen blocks his attack. Everyone is shocked by how Yi Chen with cultivation level at the Soul Palace realm could block Prince Shugxuan, who is at the pseudo transcendent realm. Gu Change tells King to pour him more tea and flirts with her, while she does which causes her to have a subtle change of heart. Immediately, Yi Chen's fortune value decreases by 10 and Gu Change is surprised. Yi Chen gets angry, ready to fight, but the sacred prince interferes again. Gu Chang thinks that Yi Chen will overcome all odds and defeat the sacred prince, and then use the opportunity to challenge him, after which he will retreat and come back stronger later in the future to avenge himself. To avoid this, he steps in to fight Yi Chen instead. He then emits some strong aura that overwhelms Yi Chen and puts him on his knees. As a result of this, Yi Chen's fortune value decreases and Gu Chang's fate value increases. Gu Chang is intrigued by this and thinks of killing Yi Chen to further increase his fate value. However, when he asks the system if he could do it, he is told that killing Yi Chen would hurt his fortune value instead since Yi Chen is the fortune's chosen and would receive heaven's protection. So he plans to gradually increase his fortune level by reaping away from Yi Chen's and then strike when the right time comes. Yi Chen then attempts to attack Gu Chang again, but Gu Chang throws him off with his power. The sect orders that they seal Yi Chen's cultivation and throw him into the dungeon where he shall await Gu Chang's punishment. Gu Chang then asks King to visit him later and she accepts. This causes Yi Chen's fate value to greatly decrease, causing damage to his mental state. Gu Chang sends an agent to spy on the Sacred Lord's conversation with King. He returns with a report that Gu Chang is the support that takes you in sacred land, currently need the most as their strongest individual. The Supreme Elder passed away 300 years ago, a secret kept from the outside world. Also, the Sacred Lord's wife is a noble lady from the Upper Realms who got caught by the Upper Realms forces and was sent back there. So the Sacred Lord wants to search for traces of his wife by having King cleave unto Ku Chang. Ku Chang tells the agent to keep an eye on Yi Chen. He wants to reap more fortune. He is then notified that he has received some rewards for face-slapping Yi Chan, of which one of them is the broken third of the World Seed. The World Seed, once complete, will allow him to create a world within his body and give him endless good luck and control over his own life and death. He then uses up all the points he gathered through Yi Chen to increase the level of his talents, thus sending a terrifying aura all across the Taekchuan sacred land. King's other soul appears to her and tries to convince her about Ku Chang while speaking ill of Yi Chen. Meanwhile, Yi Chen is surprised by what is going on and gets more mad at Ku Chang. Then, the soul of his master appears to him. He asks her why she didn't help him earlier, and she tells him that she sensed a powerful spirit that belonged to someone who had something to do with her downfall, so she couldn't dare to reveal herself. Yi Chen comes up with an idea for his escape, saying the only reason that Taekchuan's sacred land has owned the dragon veins for hundreds of years is that the sex fear the Supreme Elder's strength, not knowing that the Supreme Elder has died since 300 years ago. So he tells his master that if she spreads the truth about the Supreme Elder's death, the sex that have been coveting the dragon veins for themselves would attempt to get it, allowing him to escape during the chaos. His master responds that it would lead to the destruction of the Taekchuan's sacred land, which has nurtured him for years but he says that he doesn't care and wants them to taste the consequences of offending him. Meanwhile, Ku Chang's agent was eavesdropping on their conversation. King talks with Ku Chang, and she tells him she is willing to serve him all her life for the sake of her father and the sect. Due to this, Yi Chen's fortune value further decreases, while Ku Chang's fate value increases. King further reveals the secret that her bodily constitution is of the Nine Yin mystic beauty physique. Hearing this, Ku Chang becomes shocked as her bodily constitution is one of the physiques for refining. King finally tells him she is willing to offer herself to him if he would save Taekchuan's sacred land from its demise. Ku Chang then asks the system if eating her would have any repercussions since she is willing to offer herself to him. The system tells him not to proceed any further 
or else he could receive a backlash of fortune due to her and He-Chan's fortune. He then rejects her and tells her to return home while he stands up to leave. King's views about him change, and this adds more to his fortune value and fate value. He then decides to go visit Yi Chen in the dungeon and read more fortune. His agent comes to report to him that Yi Chen is being accompanied by the remnant spirit of a once powerful master. Ku Chang arrives at the dungeon and tells Yi Chen that he has come to pay his respects to the master backing him. But Yi Chen pretends to not know what he is saying. Ku Chang calls out to the master and she appears. He then begins to speak ill of Yi Chen, trying to damage the relationship between them. He breaks the walls of the prison with his hands and starts to make an offered that he could help her regain a physical body and return to the peak of her prime if she follows him. Yi Chen's mental state continually gets damaged and his fortune value decreases while Ku Chang's fate value increases, exactly what he wanted after all. The master declines the offer, but Ku Chang further tells her that he could forgive Yi Chen's offenses and let him go and also give King to him. He then tells her he has a present for her, the ancient soul repairing sacred medicine, the mind convergence pill. She accepts it and after he leaves, Yi Chen feels betrayed that his master formed a compromise with his sworn enemy. She tells him that everything she did was to help him get out of prison. Yi Chen then tells her if it was really for him, she should leak the information he told her about. She agrees and leaves. A crack is already formed in the relationship between them, which leads to a decrease in Yi Chen's fortune value while Ku Chang's fate value increases. Elder Ming, Ku Chang's agent, asks Ku Chang why he didn't kill Yi Chen if what he wanted was only the remnant soul, and he replies that they came to the lower realm for the Eight Baron Demon Halberd, the weapon of the Eight Baron Demon God of the Ancient Times. He then tells Elder Maid to keep watch on Yi Chen while he will be in seclusion for a while. His system shop gets unlocked, and he buys the Primordial Spirit Technique, an Eight Divine Chant. Three days later, Zhao Tian, Shu Wuji, and Xiao Hu arrive at the Taixuan Sacred Land, desiring to obtain the Dragon Veins for themselves. The Sacred Lord, however, is afraid that he might meet his end soon if Ku Chang doesn't come out of seclusion. King decides to go beg him to help them. As Shu Wuji tries to attack the Sacred Lord with his Limitless Tower, they all sense a strange primordial spirit force and start to wonder if the Supreme Elder is still alive. As King approaches Ku Chang's residence, Yi Chen appears and tries to take her with him, but she refuses and starts to insult him. Yi Chen is surprised and wonders if Ku Chang has cast a spell on her. His master warns him that they leave, but he refuses. Ku Chang discovers that King has turned her back on Yi Chen, adding more fate value points to him. He says the time has come and decides to step out. King, seeing that Ku Chang is about to open his door, quickly stabs Yi Chen, not wanting to be seen together with him. Yi Chen tells her that they will meet again in the future and leaves. Ku Chang comes to meet her and embraces her for what she did. He doesn't have to keep his distance anymore since she has decided to end things with Yi Chen. As he embraces her, his fortune and fate points increase, and he sees this as a new way to increase his fortune level without having to target the fortunes chosen. King then tells him about the situation with the Sacred Lord, and he follows her to the battle scene. Xiao Hu begins to laugh seeing that the one who has come to save the Taichuan Sacred Land is just a brat. He then attempts to attack him, but Ku Chang blocks his attack and hits him. From his technique, they shockingly discover that he is a sacred emperor and start to wonder how there could be such a young sacred emperor in the eastern wilderness. They decide to attack him together. However, he blocks all their attacks easily. Chu Wuji then captures him in the Limitless Tower, but just when they think they have defeated him, he breaks out of the Limitless Tower. They are shocked. He then attacks them with the Primordial Spirit Force. They ask about identity, and he reveals himself as one with an infinite lifespan, a god from the Upper Realm. About half a month later on the outskirts of the Central State, some random guys discuss the events that happened with Ku Chang and Yi Chen. They speak well of Ku Chang, while they mock Yi Chen. Hearing this, Yi Chen who is passing by burns them with fire using his power. He is determined to pay the Taixuan Sacred Land and Ku Chang back for the humiliation they caused him. Meanwhile, the sects are glad that Taixuan Sacred Land is now stronger than ever, and they declare Taixuan Sacred Land as their leader. King and Gu Chang receive an invitation from the Prince of the Great Xia Empire of the Central State to attend a forum. King tells Ku Chang that the Great Xia Empire is a royal family from the Central State, and no one knows how strong they truly are. She adds that the third prince himself has infinite potential as a loud ring was heard across 3,000 miles on the day he was born. Ku Chang sees this as an opportunity, and since the mark left behind on the mind convergence pill indicates that Yi Chen is approaching the central state, he decides to change his plans and go. Elder Ming, Gu Chang's agent, is also from the central state. He ascended to the upper realm 30 millennia ago. Three days later, at Daoji Academy of the central state, Lin Tan sleeps in class while the teacher teaches. The teacher shouts at him, and his classmates begin to ridicule him. He wakes up not recognizing everyone and not knowing where he is. It happens that the remnant of a soul has possessed the body of this little boy. An elder of the Lin family at the central state suddenly summons everyone and tells them 
he sensed their ancestor's presence. Everyone starts to talk about the ancestor who ascended to the upper realm a few millennia ago. The quasi-god Lin Ming, Elder Lin Ming visits the Lin family with Ku Chang, and everyone is surprised by how he is being so respectful toward Ku Chang. Ku Chang leaves him to attend to his family, and he decides to have a look around with King. Lin Qi Wan is then asked to guide them around. Meanwhile, the new fortune's chosen is also nearby. He feels a sudden heart pain as Lin Qi Wan passes by, and wonders if the original owner of the body, Lin Tian, is infatuated with his own sister. He notices King is nine yin profound beauty physique, and plans to use it to cure Lin Tian's heart sickness. Ku Chang discovers that the fortune's chosen he was planning on searching for has come to him instead. He sees his fortune point at 500, and plans to reap them and eventually kill him. Will Ku Change also reap the new fortunes chosen of his fortune points? Let us know if you want part 2 in the comment section, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. See you guys in the next video.